Mantis what? Why, hello, if it isn't the triumphant traveler. And why might you be visiting the shrine? A sign of piety, perhaps. You literally told us to come meet you here! <laughs> I was just joking. I've been waiting for you. Seems like someone's in a pretty good mood. Mm-hmm. Catching up with an old friend I hadn't seen in years was truly delightful. By the way, I heard that you had a duel before the throne, with a Fatui Harbinger no less. Courageous and astute. I must say, I am most impressed. Defeating Signora head-on in a duel means that your strength exceeds my expectations. Still, you did end up victorious. I gather congratulations are in order. <sighs> sure feels good to finally thwart the Fatui plan for once. They caused plenty of trouble along the way, but at the very least, they didn't get their hands on another Gnosis. Wait a second. Did you say Gnosis? As in, the little thing that looks something like a chess piece. Yep, that's the one. You've seen one too? Gnosis belong to the Seven. They're what keep them connected to Celestia. Oh. W what's wrong? I handed that over. You did what now? Well... How else was I supposed to save your skin from the Balladeer, exactly? The Balladeer is number six of the Fatui Harbingers. In terms of strength, he is superior to Signora. I'm not the kind of person who risks life and limb for any old reason. It, it, you did, uh, uh, for once, Byron just does not know what to say! After A created her puppet vessel, she no longer had anywhere to put it. As her erstwhile closest friend, A handed it over to me, and I've kept it in the Grand Narukami Shrine ever since. She no longer needs the power of the Gnosis, and in any case, she tells me she has severed ties with Celestia. Thus, the Gnosis became not only useless, but also a potential source of conflict. Is that not a good bargain, exchanging it for the one at the core of the plan? Judging by the results, at least, I dare say I struck a good deal. <laughs> <sighs> when you put it like that, Paimon has to agree. The Traveler is worth more than a Gnosis. <sighs> well, what's done is done. And I hardly think we'll be getting it back now. Let's leave the past in the past. Um, so, anyway... You still haven't told us why you called us here today. <laughs> it's to thank you. Really? You intend to travel all over Tavat, and the time has come for the Inazuma leg of your trip to come to an end, has it not? As a mark of my gratitude, I will answer any questions you may have about the road ahead or the events of the past. What would you like to know about? That puppet was built with technology that has been lost to time. Perhaps she, as a god, is the only one privy to the knowledge of its origins. Still, there is one other thing on this topic that I suspect you may be curious to know. Before A began modifying her own godly form, she took it upon herself to create a prototype puppet. So, you mean there are three riding shokens? No. The prototype was merely a proof of concept. Its appearance and intellect were not based on A. It was a test. The original plan was for A to simply discard it. But perhaps A thought this to be too cruel, because in the end, she chose only to seal the power within it. Later, this puppet wandered Inazuma as an ordinary human male with his own consciousness. Until... the Fatui took an interest in him. Ugh! The Fatui. Some eccentric geniuses in the ranks of the Fatui made adjustments to the prototype, not only unsealing his power, but very likely rendering him even more formidable than his original specifications. Mm hmm. The object of divine creation is now the one who has taken possession of the Gnosis. 
and the prototype puppet is now known as the Balladeer. What in the... What a crazy story! It is, isn't it? Who can say whether it's coincidence or destiny? I'm surprised an outlander like you is aware that there was once a change of Electro Archon. Few citizens of Inazuma are aware of this. Morats told us. He said that the Electro Archon Ball has passed away. Yes. The truth of the matter is that there were two twin gods, Baal and Beelzebul. Twin gods? They won the Archon War together. And when Baal established the Shogunate, Beelzebul became her Kagemusha, or Shadow Warrior. In other words, she acted as Baal's body double. Beelzebul is A, with whom we are now both acquainted. Baal's name was Makoto. As far as the world was aware, there were not two, but one. They complemented each other, and they ruled Inazuma jointly. So there was no need for the public to know the truth. In fact, the name Ball and the title of Raiden Shogun was understood to refer to both of them. Right up until... Until what? Makoto died several hundred years ago in a war that I was not personally involved in. Since then, A has assumed the Shogunate. Losing her sister must have been super hard on A. That was when A began to change. Makoto was her greatest loss. Paimon feels like she understands A a lot better now after finding that out. So what kind of god was Makoto? I didn't spend a great deal of time with her, but my impression was... she was a gentle god, who in each moment cherished the beauty of what was before her. Wow! Sorry, I haven't a clue. I'm also unfamiliar with the god you describe. But if you still have doubts about A, I would say they are misplaced. Not only does she not fit your description, but she voluntarily gave up her Gnosis long ago, severing her ties with Celestia in the process. That's good to hear. Otherwise, given that I'm her familiar, it could have made our relationship rather awkward, don't you think? Don't worry. We aren't looking to pick a fight with you. <laughs> I wish you the best of luck. May you soon discover the truth behind it all. As for your brother's whereabouts, I will use all the resources at my disposal to investigate it. And I will also borrow some of Ayato's people from the Shiumatsuban. I'll let you know if I find out anything. Consider it part of my means of thanking you. After leaving Inazuma, hmm, I think it would be easiest for you to go to Sumeru. from there on our journey so far. Yes, well, Sumeru is the land of the God of Wisdom, where the quest for wisdom and knowledge is never-ending. But their obsession gives rise to some truly inexplicable things. For example, in Sumeru, knowledge is holistically managed as a resource. Knowledge is a resource? Yes. I don't know whether it was the sages or Lesser Lord Kusanali who came up with the idea. Lesser Lord Kusanali? That's a cute name. Oh, you haven't heard. Lesser Lord Kusanali is the deity in whom the people of Sumeru place their faith. It's their chosen term of endearment for her. I'm sure you must have some things to discuss with her, too. I wish you all the best. Are you sure? Okay, then. Oh, Traveler. Do you still have the omamori I gave you? Keep it safe. Is that all you intend to do with it? There was me thinking that you might hang it around your neck to show off to the world, telling everyone who inquired that it was given to you by none other than Yai Miko, the wise and beautiful. Who in their right mind would do that? <laughs> okay, I'll stop. Now, a question for you. Traveler. What is your ambition? I see. But that is merely a small goal, based on what preoccupies you here and now. Your ambition should be something that transcends the world below and the starry sky above. Something that shines in unison with fate itself. 
Perhaps the reason you do not possess a vision is that such an ambition has yet to be engendered within you. It's a possibility. Continue on your journey, and maybe that moment will come to pass.